Heather. Yes. You are a coach. Yes. And a trainer. Yes. I am kind of a coach. You're a coach. People call me a declutter coach. You are a declutter. But, I I'm, but I'm a professional, like, come into your house and make you do things kind of a person. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to hiring somebody, there are always myths. There are always these mm -hmm. negative things that we wish we could tell people. Hey, no, that's not really the way it is. So I want to ask you what the biggest myth is that people have when they hire a professional coach and trainer and nutrition expert like yourself. They're, they're always scared, especially if we're doing nutrition coaching, that they're going to have to give up all their treats and they can never have what they want. Like their donuts. You're never, ever, ever going to let me eat my donuts again, ever. That's what they think. They think I'm going to smack it out of their hand. Never let, no, no more Diet Cokes. <laughs> never, ever have a good time. No more fun. Oh. Well, you're a downer. I am. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. So if that's the myth, which... How many of us are sitting in our cars or in our living rooms or in our bathrooms getting ready for the day going, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How am I ever going to lose weight if you don't take all my treats you away? don't do that. And I'm just setting myself up for failure because I know I can't go without my Diet Coke. <laughs> so if that's a myth and mm -hmm. you know that it is, mm -hmm. what's the truth? If I were to hire you afraid that you're going to take away my donuts... Talk me through that process and what it would actually look like. I actually just had this conversation with two clients this week and it went basically like this. They said, well, what am I ever going to get to have a cookie again? And I said, you may have whatever you like. You may order an entire pizza and eat the entire thing <laughs> because you, my friend are in charge. But if I, if you want to get to where you told me you want to get, then you need to make choices that will get you there. And can you have a cookie? Absolutely. But if you have a cookie every single day, is it going to get you where you want to go? No, not probably so not. Much. So you have to choose wisely and you have to make sure that you're choosing things that will help you get to where you want to go versus I want to have it because I want to have it because you told me I can't have it. So I see what you're doing. You're just putting all the responsibility back on me and I can't blame you anymore. No, it sucks to be a grown up. <sighs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but how awesome is that? That you are not only going to help them eat better, but you're going to help them understand why it's their choice and yeah, not yours. Absolutely. And you're making an educated choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, last night I made an educated choice to eat popcorn. While I watched a movie with my kids because you know what? I had the room in my daily intake of things that it wasn't going to derail me and it smelled really good. So I had some. Yeah. And I'm not beating myself up over it because I don't have it every night. I don't have it every day. It's not like a regular thing. And I have been good enough to my body all day long and for the last umpteen weeks that that one particular treat or candy or whatever is not going to do a thing. But I like that it has to come from them and it has to come through, sometimes it has to come through the, the experience yes. of, you know, okay, here's your, your coach, your nutrition trainer. They're mm -hmm. going to teach you why. Now try it and see if mm -hmm. it works mm -hmm. because sometimes the things that we try, they don't work and then we can pivot and move right. on and do whatever. Right. But, you know, I learned the hard why. Do I have to learn the hard way so many times <laughs> for so many things? Like I know. That if I eat more than two Oreos, mm -hmm. I am now best friends with Miralax because it clogs the works. Ugh. I cannot eat Oreos. I almost wish that was my problem. And it was. then I wouldn't eat Oreos. And it's painful and it's horrible. <laughs> and now that's way too much information for anybody to know. But yet time and time again in the past, I have eaten an entire row of Oreos and then regretted it for two weeks afterwards. Um, but when it comes to that mental shift of saying, okay, I get it, but it's not just the, what's the word I'm looking for? The reverse psychology mm -hmm. of it, that I'm going to tell you that you can't. Mm -hmm. And so therefore you feel like you need to. Right. When the choice actually truly comes from them, yep. I'm sure is when you start seeing the absolute most success. Absolutely. Absolutely. When they are choosing and that one of the clients that I spoke to, she was like, okay, I get it. All right. She's like, so I can have a cookie? I'm like, again, <laughs> I'm yep. not your mother. I'm not telling you what you can and cannot have. I'm telling you, 
you're telling me your goal is to wear a swimsuit without shorts in July. If you continue to eat cookies whenever you feel like it, you're not going to want to wear a swimsuit without shorts in July. Yeah. So the choice is yours. The goal is yours. The opportunity is yours. I am merely giving you the guidebook and the instructions to get to where you want to go. It's whether or not you choose to go there. Yeah. Yeah. It's all on you. And, and they do. I've watched so many people. They just, once they have that light bulb moment, that realization of, oh, I actually am in control. I actually can create change in my body. I actually can make myself feel really good or really bad. Then that is when they start to see the change yeah. because they go, uh-huh. And if oh, I choose okay. this, I get it. then I get this positive reward yes. and then I feel good. And then I make another good choice. And then the momentum starts to roll. And the same thing happens when they, when they do on that next weekend, they go, oh, you know what? I'm going to have a bowl of ice cream. And then they tell me, oh my gosh, I was so sick. I, I felt, felt so gross. I felt awful. Afterwards. You know, it's again, mm -hmm. like a reinforcement of your choice and the consequence that comes with it, whether it's a yeah. positive or a negative one. One of my favorite quotes, and you actually touched this on last week's episode. One of my favorite quotes is from Brian Tracy um, and kind of an old school productivity mm -hmm. kind of a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, but he says, I am responsible. I am responsible. Mm -hmm. I am responsible. Mm -hmm. And then I added my own little thing to the end. And mm -hmm. I said, I am responsible because responsibility gives me power. Yep. And so when... <laughs> When my kids are playing the blame game, mm -hmm. I didn't do it. She did it. Bitch. You're <laughs> making me mad. I make them stand up and say that I, I am responsible. It. I am responsible. I am responsible because responsibility gives me power. You can't hand your control over to somebody right. else. Um, but yeah, so are you going to make anybody give up their cookies? No, nope. you're going to show them what it <laughs> looks like if they yes. do, if they yes. make that choice. Right. If they so do. what, what is the biggest myth? For you, when people... Oh, for when people are afraid to hire a professional organizer because they think that I am going to come in and get rid of all of their stuff. <laughs> that I am going to make them throw it all away. You don't? You don't go through their <laughs> closets and say, you need none of this. This is horrible. Get rid of it. No. No. And I don't expect anybody to be a minimalist. I don't expect anybody to get rid of anything that they don't want to. And in fact, I... I cannot remove anything from your house that you have not given me permission to remove. Hmm. That would be stealing. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it's illegal. It's illegal for me to and do that. And technically, if I took your cookies, that would be stealing. Right? And we don't want to go to jail. No. So we're not going to do no. that. <laughs> so my, uh, the thing that I tell everybody is that, again, with the same thing, if your goal is to declutter your house and to get organized. I can only do so much to show you how to get there without getting rid of the clutter. Mm -hmm. There are things we can certainly do to just kind of organize the space and put it all back together. But if you are looking to feel that relief and feel burden free and feel freedom and feel like when you walk into your house, you're walking into your favorite motel, like just that feeling of, I don't have to worry about anything right now. Mm -hmm. If you want to get there, if you want that goal, you're going to have to get rid of something. Now, I can coach you as to let's think about this and let's really think about why are you keeping it and what's the purpose of it? Can it go somewhere else? But when it comes right down to it, I think I've only ever had in the five years that I've been doing this, two clients where we just organized and we didn't get rid of anything. Um doesn't that kind of naturally happen though, yes. as you're kind of yeah. organizing? I mean, I just did that with my bathroom closet. It's been on my list of things to do. And suddenly I have free time. Free time. Huh? And <laughs> so I cleaned it out and it was funny because I kept coming across things and I was like, why do I have this? I don't even know what this is. Mm -hmm. I found a bag of white powder looking stuff. <laughs> And I was like, um. <laughs> and I called my husband and I was like, what is this? And he was like, I don't know, taste it. And I was like, no, <laughs> I feel like that's not a safe decision. <laughs> taste it. Yeah. Whose first choice is to taste it? I don't know. I just, I, I, anyway, <laughs> so I threw the bag of white stuff away. I'm not sure what it was or where it came from. 
But, you know, you don't necessarily find that stuff until you're decluttering. Right. You don't necessarily know it's hiding. I don't know where it was, even. I just was shelf by shelf clearing it <laughs> off. You know, you never know. Mm, yeah. But I think it's just natural. Isn't it just naturally? You just kind of find bags of yeah. things and little things that you don't need. And Well, and there are people that are extremely attached to everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking hoarders. Um, you know, just very, very sentimental people. And that's fine. And we can talk through it and walk through it and figure out what's the best use of the thing mm -hmm. and what the value really is to you. Mm -hmm. um, but I think probably in both of our industries, people have that assumption because they've had an experience or somebody else has had an experience yeah. where those things have actually happened. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they've been powerless or they feel like they've been taken advantage of by somebody else which is always super important to vet out who you're working with and ask them questions and, yeah. and get to know them and their personality. And you know what, as, as a coach and somebody who uses words to create change, <laughs> um, you know, I think there will be people who we jive with and people who we don't. Sure. But when it comes down to our biggest myths, I mean, if this is a big myth, something is based in truth, but it's not the way everybody operates and it's not the way everybody functions and everybody does things. Otherwise we wouldn't have a job. Right. Well, right. and you can also think of that as whatever that myth is, or even if you don't know it's a myth, it's a fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so if you, whatever's holding you back from working with a coach or jumping into that new lifestyle, it's, a fear and so if you can identify the fear okay my fear is I will never get to have cookies again think about that and think about is that a rational fear why are you so afraid to never have cookies what is it that cookies do for you because likely what they do for you has nothing to do with the cookie maybe it has to do with the fact that you used to bake all the time with your grandma and it reminds you of your grandma and you never want to have to forget about your grandma you know, I mean, there are a lot of things like that that are deeply, deeply rooted in, and you may not even be able to recognize right at first. It may take some time and some work to think about it and go, okay, what is it that I'm so afraid of? Why am I, why, what, what's holding me back? Am I afraid to let go of my Diet Coke? Well, what is it Diet Coke is doing for you? Is it, you just love it and it just tastes so delicious? Maybe, but I don't think that's what your real attachment is. Maybe it's the social thing. Maybe mm -hmm. it's you drink it with your girlfriends. Maybe it's your your little getaway is you get to leave the kids and go get a Coke, mm -hmm. you know? Or maybe it's your afternoon pick-me-up right before you have to go get kids from school and it's what makes you feel like you have you time. Yeah. So whatever your attachment is to that thing, just like we talked about in the previous episode about attaching feelings to gyms and in, mm -hmm. inanimate objects, uh -huh. cookies, Diet Coke, clutter. Those are inanimate yeah. objects. Yeah. They are not, they do not make you feel any certain way. You're attaching emotion to them. So just the way that we told you to figure out what it is you want to feel about the gym, figure out what it is you want to feel about food. Do you want to feel like it nourishes you? Do you want to feel like your house relaxes you and makes you feel comfortable? And then start moving toward that feeling and away from whatever you're scared of. Yeah. Just change, change your sight uh, and, and change what you want. So many times people get so caught up in the, well, I have to. I'm going to have to eat clean. I'm going to have to throw things away. But do you want to? Right. Because all of a sudden that changes the way you feel about something. You know, I want to live in a neat, tidy, organized house. That means... When all is said and done, I really want to get rid of stuff because I want to live in a yes. place that makes me feel good. I want to limit what I eat because I want to feel good. Yeah. So what do you want instead of what you are afraid of? And you know what? Working with one of us might not be the answer, but it might be. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of different trainers and nutrition coaches. Mm -hmm. There are oh, lots yeah. of different professional organizers. Absolutely. If we aren't the one... <laughs> Go find one that is, dang it. Yeah. yeah. Um, find somebody that can help you and support you. Yes. Doing the things that you want to do. But be aware of the myths that are out there. Um, yes. Because we really do want to help. And we want to help you be successful and give you the power 
uh, I have that power. Don't be afraid to ask questions ask. too. I mean, ask. that's totally a fair question to say. So if I hire you, does that mean I can never have a cookie again? Yeah. <laughs> if that person says, yes, that's what that means, then you might need to find someone else to work with. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or if they say, yes, you're going to have to throw away all your extra clutter. You have to clear out your house. Maybe that's not the person for you. Right. Right. So pick and choose. Remember, you are the one that's in control and you are the one that knows what you want, not what you have to do, not what you need to do. You're the one that knows what you want. So make sure that you express your wants uh, anytime that you go to work with uh, a coach, a trainer, uh, whatever it is that you're looking for, professional organizer, nutrition, mm -hmm. uh, whatever it is that you're looking for, make sure that you know what you want out of it uh, so that you are working with a person that can get you there. So I guess this was more of like an information yeah. podcast yeah, rather than absolutely. anything. But I guess if we had to give an figure action figure out what you step, want. Figure out what you want. Figure, figure out what, what you want. want. Maybe because make a list. That's what's going to give you the plan to go get what you want in the way that you want. Right. Right. Good luck. Okay. So we really are here to help you get what you want. And if you've gotten anything from this podcast, make sure that you share it with somebody who can also benefit from it so that they can start figuring out what they want and how they can actually go and get it. Yeah. Post it on social media, tag us so that we can get to know you and we can start to watch you and your progress on your social media feeds. Okay. We'll see you next week.